Thank you for joining me live from the grooming table. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003, but it is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the pet grooming industry so you can provide the same level of quality care for your beloved pets at home as I provide to my pet clients right here in my grooming salon. One of my goals here on my YouTube channel is to bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry and that is one that includes you, pet owners, as valuable consumers and not just pet groomers. With so many people seeking valuable knowledge in order to groom their dogs at home, having a place to learn proper dog grooming techniques and receive professional advice on tools, products, and where to get them is essential. And that is why I created this YouTube channel for you and your pets. Welcome to Go Groomer on YouTube. We are live from the grooming table tonight, and I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me here tonight. As usual, every Monday, live at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. I'm so glad you're here. Wow, I better take a few breaths because I have a lot to say tonight. I have a lot to, to cover. Tonight's topic is Beginner Guide to Running a Dog Grooming Business in 2022. Wow, we got a lot to cover, like I said. Uh, we're going to be touching on things such as how to choose a name for your dog grooming business, how to set up your business as an LLC, very important, and I'll tell you why, um, how to open a business checking account for your dog grooming business, another very important thing you need to do, and I'm going to talk about that tonight, so easy, once you're set up with all these things, guys, you're ready to rock and roll. We're going to talk about mobile dog grooming versus brick and mortar dog grooming facilities versus other options. What are those options? Do you need to hire a certified public accountant to prepare your taxes for your dog grooming business? I'm going to answer that tonight. <laughs> How to track your income expenses. Very important. We're going to talk about that. What I do. How do you collect sales tax and do you have to? We're going to talk about that too. It's very important that you know these things before you start your dog grooming business. What type of insurance should you purchase for your pet grooming business? Another very important factor. We have to talk about that. We're going to talk about business cards, scheduling and payment processing, advertising your dog grooming business, and so much more. We have a lot to talk about tonight, so let's get to it, guys. Let's start with name your business. I feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm a, a talk show host on a game show. Name your business. Okay, it's very important when it comes to choosing the name for your dog grooming business. Keep it short and sweet, easy to remember, very important. Like two or three words. Like go groomer. You can't pick that one cuz it's mine. Like the hairy hound. You can't pick that one cuz it's mine too. But what I'm saying guys, Short and sweet, you want your potential clients and your existing clients to not have to stumble around in their mind when they're trying to think, what's the name of my dog groomer? When they're, they're telling somebody who says, your dog looks amazing, where do you get it groomed? I get it groomed at that old fashioned dog grooming salon, it's called down the road and up the street. That's too long of a name. <laughs> my dog groomers go groomer. They won't forget it. Um, also, it, it just, it's easy to say, it's easy to put on a business card, it's easy to make a logo, the shorter your business name is. And believe me guys, I want you to put a lot of thought into it when you're choosing the name for your business. When I chose the name for my business, The Hairy Hound, that was 20 years ago. I'm, I'm still pretty pleased with my choice. Now, can you change it? Of course you can change it. But in doing so, some of the other things we're gonna talk about here tonight, you would have to go and change all that too, which is like a domino effect and a chain reaction. And so put a lot of thought into it when you're choosing the name for your pet grooming business. You want it to be a couple words and you want it to be something easy and fun to remember so that your clients and your potential clients won't forget it. Very important. Now, on that same topic, so, okay, so we picked a name. Let's, let's say we picked Go Groomer. Okay, so now what do we do? 
Now we have to search within your particular state's database for that fictitious name. The fictitious name that you hope to use and to claim as your own so that nobody else can use it. And you do not have to pay for this. It's, it's simple. If you do have to pay for a fictitious name, it's very, very minimal. I don't think you do. I think it's a matter of registering it. But anyway, so if the business name that you would like to register, if it's been taken, then you must then choose another name to operate under. So go into this and do a lot of brainstorming when you're choosing the name for your business. Pick two or three because when it comes down to it, you may not be able to use your first choice. So have a backup choice uh, or just mix the words around or whatever you need to do. But you know, if the business name that you would like to register has been taken, then, then you have to choose another one to operate under. Me, I live in Pennsylvania. So what do I do? I have linked in the description below the website for my state, which is Pennsylvania, that I would go to and search for that fictitious name. So what I'm saying to you guys is depending on where you live, you will have a different website, a different state to go to. All of our states and providences have their own website and their own information database. And that's where you would go to search for the name you would like. So let's say now we've picked a name and now we have registered it as a fictitious name so nobody else can use it. What do we do next? Anybody know? Hello, look at all of you. <laughs> I just love you guys. Good to see you all here tonight. The next thing we do is very important and this is the very next thing you do you set up an llc in that name you have a law office create an llc for your business as this is going to protect you and your assets it costs about 700 dollars to set up but it's well worth it um, you can do business as a sole proprietor you know, with your own social security number, you can just simply do business, like doing business as, we've all heard of that. You can do business as a sole proprietor, but it can be risky and you could subject your business and your personal assets to become attacked in the event of a mishap. So set up that LLC, it's very important. I have a lawyer that I work with. She's also somebody that I, I trust very much, uh, we are friends, and I could possibly, if you need to reach out to me in, in an email, if you live in the United States, um, it might be possible, I don't know, you know, you may have to use a lawyer that is actually in your state, I'm not sure, but if you need help with that aspect of, of setting up your LLC guys and you need a good suggestion, you can email me and I'll, I'll s s hook you up with a good, lawyer that is just going to get it done and take care of business but it's important so you must set up that LLC so now we've chosen a name we've registered that name as a fictitious business name we now have applied for an, an LLC with our state in that business name and after you set up an LLC and you've received the official documentation from your state, you go to your bank and you open a business checking account under your new LLC. Very important. This will be the account that all your business transactions will go through, including your income too. Having a business account makes tax time a breeze. Very important. When you open your business checking account, also ask to attach either a debit card or a credit card to the account for all of your business purchases. Again, this will make it very easy to track those, those expenses. So, you know, it pretty much makes it fail proof, you know, come tax time. Taxes, if you are running your own pet grooming business, taxes can be a lot of preparation. So the more fine-tuned you make your machine and your operation, the better it is for you because let's face it, you are the one who wears many feathers in your cap. You're the groomer, you're the scheduler, you keep all your supplies ordered, you keep the, the shop clean and, and bacteria-free and germ-free. 
You groom the dogs, you schedule the dogs, you do the bookkeeping. You have a lot of jobs, guys, if you're going to be running a dog grooming business. So having your LLC protects you personally and your assets, like your house, your beach house, your whatever, your Harley Davidson motorcycle. These are assets, guys. Your Tacoma truck, King of Aliens, that's an asset. It belongs to you. It's worth money. So protecting yourself is very important. That's why we set up the LLC. And after we do that, we open a banking account with your favorite local bank, whomever your bank is. Um, I have my favorite. I have many accounts with my favorite bank. And I have two business accounts with them too. One is for the Harry Hound and one is for Go Groomer. And it is the way to keep track of everything and keep your assets safe and keep your personal money separated from your business money. And that's very important because you can't just dump all your business money into your personal account and easily track your expenses and track uh, what you're gonna owe at tax time and, and how much income you made. If all that is going into one count, account, it is just so quick and easy to do a quick report and, and print that out. So gotta open that business account, guys. Um, my business account to open trying to think if it even cost me anything. I don't think it costs me anything. There are a few little fees. Um, I think one is just a $5 fee a month um, for all of the um, documentation that I get with it. I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's just like opening in a checking account, okay? But when you do go, guys, to open this account, you must tell them I'm opening a business account and you're taking all your paperwork that you received from your lawyer and from the state that created your LLC, because they're gonna need to know your EIN number you know, as the LLC. They're going to need to have proof of all this stuff when they open your business account, but that's the way to go. Gotta open that business account. So, wow, what do we got now? We're, we're working on a real business here, aren't we? We got a name. We've registered our fictitious name. We, uh, what else did we do? We opened, a, we started an LLC in our business name. We opened a checking account in our business name so that we can do business appropriately and easy, make it easy for us. What do we do next? Well, if you haven't decided this yet, you have to be sure you decide this before you start. Where will you groom? Um, decide if you're going to be a mobile groomer. Are you going to be a brick and mortar groomer where you, you rent a storefront or, or you know, in a, in a strip mall or in your local town? Um, are you gonna be an in-home grooming salon like I am? My business is incorporated and built into my home. So you have to decide these things. Or are you gonna be a house call groomer? You have to make up your mind, all of which have pros and cons as well as different pricing structures guys that's important to remember regardless of which route which route that you do choose keeping good records is imperative to operating a successful dog grooming business very important so you have to figure out how you're going to operate and set up your procedures accordingly for your business mobile grooming Mobile grooming offers you the most freedom when it comes to starting a grooming business. Um, grooming mobily allows you to work in many counties and townships, as well as if you decide to relocate to a different state, your business is ready to move with you, all in one, all under one roof on four wheels. It's fantastic. But my point is this, if, if you, if you um, went the brick and mortar route and you invested money into um, putting up walls into your your new salon that you're going to be leasing or paying rent on and you you know You put up banisters for safety There's different things that you will have to comply with in your own townships and your own county if you're going to open a business You will have a lot lot less of that as a mobile groomer. You're encapsulated into your mobile grooming vessel It's all there and it moves with you I just, I really think that these days it's a way to go. Another benefit to mobile grooming is 
you have less local restrictions, um, which including providing appropriate customer parking um, and facility entrance stipulations. You must comply with these or your business could be fined or possibly shut down. So if you go to start a business and you have, you have to make sure it's handicapped accessible for everybody to be able to come into your salon, and it has to be safe and it has to be inspected in, with your lo local jurisdiction and approved. So here, let's say you just put $30,000 into you know, creating your grooming salon inside a nice, safe, um, climate controlled environment with all the equipment and, and perfectly set up, but you don't have the proper entrance. You have to actually widen your entrance or you, know, you have to do all that homework first. So it's very important to decide where you're going to do business and then to go directly to your county, your township and say, what do I have to comply with to operate a dog grooming business at 101 Go Groomer Lane, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's, I had to do that. I had to provide parking. I had to provide a separate entrance, enough parking for three cars. Uh, there was stipulations. I have to have a hair trap in my drain. The, the plumbing has to be a certain way. So, you know, if, if these things aren't in compliancy with my local township and they decided to come in and take a look or one of my neighbors would say, I don't like that Amy has a dog grooming business. I'm calling the township and have them check her out and see if they can shut her down for something. People do do that. Uh, I could be shut down or have to come up with a huge solution that costs money in order to be in compliant with my local jurisdiction. So. I wanted to tell you guys this and put emphasis on it because it's very important to know where you want to groom from and what you have to comply with if you decide to be a brick and mortar groomer, in home groomer or house call groomer or mobile grooming. Um, if I were starting a grooming business in 2022, which I just might, I might start another grooming business and teach people how to groom and put them out there in the industry because they need it. If I were starting a grooming business in 2022, I would 100% go mobile grooming. Absolutely. Your grooming van is a complete write-off from your income and within five to seven years or less, your grooming van will be totally paid for too. So you won't be paying rent. You won't be leasing. You will have repairs and upkeep on your van, absolutely. But nothing as compared to a brick and mortar. I just think it is absolutely smart and it's convenient and people like convenience in 2022 because we're all so busy. Trust me. All right, next topic. Can I take a drink of water? <laughs> I need a drink of water, King. Talking a lot. I have so much to say. All right, our next topic is Hire a certified public accountant. Did you hear me? Don't do your own taxes. Don't do it. You need that professional certified public accountant who can definitely always steer you in the right direction. It, trust me, having a certified public accountant on your side when it comes to tax season will take so much pressure and stress off of you because They'll, they'll actually be able to, you know, tell you things that you didn't know, things that are available to you because you're self-employed that you wouldn't know if you did your own taxes. Um, different things with your state, you know, even local taxes. There are breaks depending on where you work, how much you make, and what, you know, whether you're single or married or whatever. So hire that certified public accountant to prepare your local, state, and federal taxes every year, guys. And I would build a relationship with that person and go to them all the time every year because you do build a relationship. They got your back. They want to help you. And they're also getting in tune with your business. So don't keep switching around. I go to H&R Block one year. I go to Hewitt, Hewitt whatever the next year, you know. You want to stick with a certified public accountant because they will become very 
comfortable with understanding how your grooming business works and what your write-offs are, what your expenses are, and be able to, to get you the best tax return or, you know, so you don't overpay or underpay because you don't want to do either. If you underpay, you're, you're going to pay it back. You know, it's eventually going to get noticed. So you need it. You need a CPA. Um, I pay about $650 annually, once a year, 650 maybe a little more, to my CPA, and, and that expense is deducted right from my income as well, guys. That is called an expense for business. So yeah, you pay $600 to an accountant, but you write it off of your, your pet grooming business because you had to pay it to get your taxes done. That's the way, that's the way it is. So it's a write-off as well. Everything that costs money to run your business is a business expense and you must claim those costs on your taxes. So if you're going to write it off, you have to also keep receipts and you have to claim it. Again, that's where your certified public accountant can help you tremendously and guide you in the right direction. So I definitely say, you know, find yourself a good accountant. It's very important. And that leads us right into the next topic, which is record keeping. This is very important, guys. So keep in mind that you, you definitely need to retain receipts for any and all expenses related to the operations of your grooming business. For example, any and all grooming supplies, including repairs too. And that includes repairs to your mobile grooming van or repairs to your grooming facility, whether it's an in-home or a brick and mortar. Um, you have a broken window, you had to repair it, that's an expense. It's a write-off, but you must keep your receipts. You must. If you're tracking and paying for everything through one bank account, it makes it so easy at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter, whichever way you file, to say, here's my expenses, here's what I made. Your accountant's going to figure it all out, and you sign, and off you go. So, got to retain those receipts for any and all grooming supplies, including repairs. Um, including shampoo, conditioner, brushes, combs, any other tools, clippers, blades, dryers, bathing systems, clipper and blade repair and sharpening. That's an expense. You get your scissors sharpened, you deduct that from your income at the end of the year. It's called profit and loss. You have to do it. Your towels, absorber towels, your laundry detergent, your paper towels to clean, anything, cleaning supplies, Utility bills. I have an in-home pet grooming business. My salon occupies about 15% of our home's square footage. So I claim 15% of my home utilities and write it off of the bottom line of profit and loss annually. So 15% of our home utilities is a write-off because we have an in-home business. So if you have a brick and mortar and you're paying and leasing and paying rent, 100% of your utilities are a write-off because that is 100% just used for dog grooming. So, you know, down to your trash removal, guys. You have uh, trash removal once a week, deduct it. That's a utility. Um, however you interact with your clients, whether that's on a cell phone or a landline, that's deducted. Anything that has to do with how you run your business needs to be deducted. Otherwise, you're gonna have a huge income and you're gonna pay a lot of taxes and you shouldn't be because you did not do the profit loss. You have to do it. So um, obviously, okay, so I claim 15% of my home utilities and I write it off the bottom line, but it doesn't stop there, guys. Anything that contributes to running your business down to replacing a light bulb is a business expense. So keep those records. You can use a computer program such as Microsoft Excel or Apple Numbers. I use Apple Numbers to track and calculate your business sales and your write-offs, known as your profit and loss. So pick a program and stick with it. And it's easy, guys. It's so easy. And it's also interesting as you go along and you start tracking your expenses um, you, you know, you're going to make good money grooming. You're, you are, but you do have a lot of expenses, guys. So you must definitely do good record keeping. Keep up with that because it's going to save you from paying taxes you shouldn't be paying. 
So it's very important. Being in business for yourself is a lot of work, but guys, it offers you a freedom unlike anything else. So it is worth it. Trust me. Next topic, sales tax. That's a big one. A lot of people say, I don't understand. Do I collect it? What do I do? How do I collect it? How do I submit it? Do you have to collect sales tax from your clients on your grooming services? The answer to that is maybe. <laughs> It depends on what state you live in and that state's sales tax regulations. I live in Pennsylvania and my state requires pet groomers to collect and submit quarterly 6% of all sales generated from grooming dogs. 6% of my income has to be collected. So if I charge $40 to groom a little Yorkie, I have to charge $42.40. That extra $2.40 is sales tax. And every quarter I have to submit that to my state. I set up an account with my state, so easy to do, online on my state's website, not through any other company. Go to your states.org website, okay? Wherever you live. And you'll find out how to submit sales tax, you know, how to set up that account. Mine is deducted right out of my business account. There again, it's trackable. Sales tax, you have to provide that at the end of the year when you do your annual taxes. You have to say, I, I submitted you know, uh, $3,000 in sales tax this year. So they need to see all this documentation. But if it's all coming out of the same account, it is so easy and it makes your life so easy. So um, I have actually linked below in the, um, the website for Pennsylvania sales tax. Now I know this doesn't apply to most of you. You don't live in Pennsylvania. Okay, so I just want you to see what it looks like, see how it works. So Pennsylvania sales tax, I've linked their website, but if you live in a different state, you need to go to your state's website and find out if you're required to collect and submit sales tax and how much, what percentage are you required to add a tax to. So it's important. So I have linked, I have many links for you guys to go surf and check out in the description of this video. You just click on the little arrow and you get a big drop down menu and you'll see all the information for the video and the links. So I, I put my sales, my state's sales tax link there so you can see what it looks like, but you have to look for your particular, um, you have to go and find your, the website for your particular state or providence that you live in. Oh, the next topic, this is great. Business insurance. This is a question a lot of people stumble on and it's such an easy fix and it's very necessary. I'm gonna tell you why. Business insurance must be in place before you open your business up to the public. Must be. I've linked two different companies below in the description that you can check out and, and obtain the specific coverage that you need. So you need to reach out to them, whichever one, you reach out to both of them, talk to both of them, make a decision. Um, tell them your specific grooming needs. I'm a mobile groomer, I'm a house cold groomer, whatever. If you have a grooming salon on your home property, I want you to know this. If you have a salon like I do, it's built into my home. Your homeowner's insurance does not cover your business and liabilities associated with it. So did you hear that? If you have an in-home business, your homeowner's insurance does not cover your business and the liabilities associated with it. That's important for you to know. You'll need a separate policy designed for a dog grooming business. Okay, I have two policies. I have a homeowner's insurance policy for our home and I have a business policy for my dog grooming business. And they are different. They, they cover different things. Another benefit to having your business insured, having an insurance policy, is that it travels with you. Guys, this is a this is a really neat aspect of having a pet grooming insurance policy. Your business insurance policy goes wherever you go. So wherever you groom. If you're a house call groomer, it goes wherever you go. If you're working with another groomer to help them get caught up, you're covered under your own policy. Isn't that cool? Even if you do volunteer work with shelters and rescue rescue groups, my policy is through Gibson Governor and it costs me $500 a year. It's not a huge expense, but you have to have it. 
So there you go. That gives you an idea. But the, the cool thing, like I said, guys, that policy goes with you. If you decide to go and help another groomer, groomer friend, your policy covers you, you know, if you would injure yourself or a, a dog accidentally, your policy covers you. So that's important to know. There's two insurance companies linked in the description of this video if you wanna go check them out. If you, you know, you, you're looking for insurance or if you're starting up your business, you're gonna need to. I linked the two most reputable companies known to pet grooming. So it's awesome. Next topic, guys, business cards. Appointment cards. These little guys. Where do you get them? Where do I get them? Vistaprint. I've been using Vistaprint for a long, long time. Um, I've used them for years. They're linked below uh, under business cards, I think. Um, I've used Vistaprint to print both my business cards and my appointment cards. Appointment cards is when my dogs are I'm done grooming them and I'm checking them out and I make their new appointment for the next six weeks. That's on, you can you can do a, an appointment card on the back of your business card. Like this particular one for, I don't know if you guys can see it, for Vistaprint, you can do double-sided printing. So on one side you could have your business card and on the other side you could have your next appointment with Go Groomer is, there you go, here you go see in six weeks so it's very important to have these and have them printed and ready like I said I use Vista print I'm very happy with them they provide easy templates to create your own business cards or appointment cards on their website yourself for free they provide the templates all kinds of templates to choose from or you can design it yourself and upload it yourself onto their website and have it printed out they're high quality products, they're affordable prices, as well as speedy delivery to your door. So there you go, guys. That's where I get my business cards and my appointment cards printed at Vistaprint. I mean, you can get, oh, like 500 for $50 or something. It'd take you a long time to run out of them, but, but you have to have them. Next topic. Oh, and I've linked Vistaprint. I don't know if I told you guys that. I've linked them below, not affiliated not affiliated just like them okay so um, scheduling software storing client information and payment processing I get I have all that in one all in one by far in 2022 the best choice is square also known as square up we're talking scheduling software storing client information and payment processing all in one. So it holds my schedule. It um, can accept payments, whether it's through a card, or you can accept cash and, and checks as well, guys. It's absolutely fine. And it stores my client information, their, you know, their address, the dog's information, their uh, phone numbers, the email addresses, all that stuff. So my choice in 2022 at this point by far is Square. Square is the most inexpensive way to run your dog grooming business. I've been using it for a year and not only do I love it, but so do my clients. They tell me that all the time. Square offers them automatic um, appointment reminders and credit card payment options with security. So they're secure payments. Um, they, it's a secure payment. They love it. Um, the automatic reminders are wonderful. Square also offers free scheduling software that runs across all your devices, your smartphones, your tablets, your computers. I can quickly connect to my schedule from anywhere, on my phone, on my iPad. I use an iPad here in my shop. That's where I, I do all my scheduling. I use a phone if I'm away from home, and I also use a laptop all the time when I'm away from home. So I can quickly connect to my schedule from anywhere. I can change appointments, I can add services, or even issue refunds and discounts if necessary from any device. And the only cost to use their services and solutions are the purchase of your credit card reader or terminal, which I purchase the reader, this will accept chip cards um, 
it won't scan or swipe. You would need one of those little um, ones that plug into your headphone jack if you were gonna swipe. This is a chip reader. This was $50, so I purchased this. The software is free. I've linked this in the description below, guys. You go check it out. Not affiliated. It just rocks. Um, it, the software that they provide for me to, to store all my, my customer data and schedule people and put services and everything, it's all free. It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I purchased the Square Reader for $50 directly from their website, and I linked this directly to my business bank account to, uh, for processing my payments. So my payments will be processed through Squared, and then it goes directly into my business account. It's wonderful, easy to set up. The scheduling and processing solutions through Square are free and very easy to use. An automatic fee of 2.6% plus 10 cents per transaction is added to each transaction. So each transaction, they add a 2.6% charge plus 10 cents for every transaction um, through the Square Reader into your bank account. I simply charge the client these fees during the checkout process if they chose to pay with a credit card or a debit card and the convenience of using their card outweighs the small fee that they are de they're delighted to pay it. They, no complaints ever. In fact, I have people that walk in here with their checkbook and debit card and they just prefer to swipe the card. And I tell them, well, there's a small fee attached to that. I don't care. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's just the convenience, I guess. They like it. It took me a little time to set up my business um, to, to run with Square, but I pay nothing to utilize this very professional cloud-based business solution. It's fantastic. I, I've linked Square below, so please go check it out if that's a solution that you are looking for. Um, it may be the one for you. That's the one I use. It's uh, the least expensive and it's a powerful, powerful solution. And it's very secure. The last topic that we are gonna cover on running our grooming business is advertising your pet grooming business. This is another thing everybody's like, how do I get my clients? All right, guys, it's 2022, right? The best way to advertise your pet grooming business is on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. These, platform, these platforms allow you to create a short profile showcasing the services that you offer, as well as daily posting, sharing photos of the pets that you groom. And nothing reaches an audience of potential clients faster than, than that, or cheaper. <laughs> How is that for cheap advertising? Another way to advertise your pet grooming business is to drop off your business cards to all your local vet offices, your pet stores, um, boarding and doggy daycare facilities, etc. anything like that. Um, even your, your um, rescues and, and humane societies and shelters because those dogs are all going to be getting homes, hopefully, and they're going to need a groomer. So, you know, you build a small little cordial relationship with the staff that works at your local shelters and rescues and say, can I leave my cards here for you to, you know, to, to hand out when you, when you do send a dog home for their forever home and, you know, I'll cover those grooming needs for them because they usually do get send people home with a packet of, of information for caring for the dog. So be, let your card be that one. There, there may be other groomers that bring their cards too. Maybe they'll, they'll stick four or five cards in that little packet, but if that's where we go back to the beginning of this conversation today, if your name, your business name rocks, they're gonna choose you. <laughs> Some people just choose for that reason as they're looking down and like, this, that, the, oh, go groomer. I want go groomer to groom my dog. So think about your business name because it is your little billboard for your business. It speaks of what you do and you want it to be easy to remember and catchy and fun and very uplifting. So um, that is one way to do it, guys, definitely to, um, stop in at all those places and drop off your cards introduce yourself don't be shy and 
and and all hi I'm here I'm turn and when you give you my business cards in case you know anybody needs grooming no way pop your chest out like a poodle walk in and say hey I'm a local pet groomer and um, I would love to take care of some of the dogs that come in here if, if anybody ever has any grooming needs you know I work very hard to provide quality care for the dogs I groom so please send them my card I mean be professional because you are a professional that's great so be professional don't forget you're a professional okay um, obviously though guys hey listen the best advertisement is definitely word of mouth okay people talking about you offer the best quality grooming session possible by using safe one-on-one -on -one grooming practices and carefully selecting the tools products and equipment that you use to groom your client pets carefully select the products tools and equipment that you use to groom your client pets because it shows in your finished work definitely use safe grooming practices um, don't overbook you know do you book groom dogs one-on-one -on -one. You never leave that dog from the moment you take them from their client to the moment you return it to the client, the dog's with you. That's what your client wants and that's what you're gonna give them. Charge for it because you're a rock star groomer. Your satisfied customers are your best advertisement, you know this. So do everything you possibly can to ensure the pets you groom receive the highest level of care available to them on the market and your pet grooming business will be a huge success on its own. I mean, your work speaks for itself. Your clients, word of mouth, are gonna speak highly of you because they love their dogs and they trust you and they love the work that you perform and you produce. When you first begin grooming, you're not going to, you know, your grooming work, you're gonna see a lot of room for improvement. Your, your clients are going to grow with you they realize pet grooming is not easy and you're learning and you're but you already have the basics and you know how to groom safely and you groom one-on-one -on -one. you've already got what they want your skills are going to continue to get better and better and better the more you groom and they're going to grow with you so de and definitely don't be afraid to charge running a grooming business is expensive you do not have to explain yourself if somebody's balking at prices um, that's your price, you know. Um, you can either pay it or not. I mean, it's it is what it is. Uh, it's not negotiable. So, another thing I want to tell you guys, if you are looking to begin a pet grooming business, there are several books. One of my favorite all-time books is From Problems to Profits. This is a wonderful book. Um, it's the Mad it's the Madison management system. This is a whole system of how to run a dog grooming business. It's fantastic. I've done a video about this book before, guys. I believe they came out with a new edition of it. Obviously, things change, especially in our digital world. But that book is a great guide, and it has got just absolutely fantastic advice in it as, as far as to how to run your pet growing business seamlessly and will answer so many questions that you didn't even know you needed answered that's why it's nice to have you know the information at your fingertips is there's so much to know when opening a business also if you're going to open a pet grooming business you're going to want to subscribe to groomer to groomer magazine this comes out once a month it's absolutely free and you're gonna love it. And this tells you everything that's going on in the pet grooming industry, as well as all the dates for shows, is always listed in the back here. Upcoming shows, trade shows, very important for groomers to attend trade shows. Everything you need to know that just happened last month in grooming is in this book, as far and even advertisements for products that you're probably already interested in buying. This is a great little magazine put on by Barclay Productions and you can get it for free by going to barclay.com or barclayproductions.com or barclay.com one or the other but it's uh, and sign up for it for free with you can also receive it in PDF format through email which is really nice you can just surf through it on your phone or on your tablet or your computer or whatever but I have subscribed to this 
ever since I became a groomer. And I have always loved getting it in the mail because I like to sit down and look at it. I like that. I like that. I love receiving it from the mailbox. Groomer to Groomer Magazine's here. What's new in my industry? This is exciting. So, and I don't care if you're a, if you're looking to be a dog groomer or not. If you just want this magazine, you can sign up for free just to find out what's going on in the grooming industry. It's wonderful. So that is everything that I had put in my notes today. That is not everything that goes into starting a, a pet grooming business, running a pet grooming business successfully. But first of all, I see some super chats here. We are so saluting. Oh my gosh, Whew, you guys are busy chatting. Morgan, Jenny Sutherland. Oh, we're getting those salutes out right now. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for listening to me chit chat and I hope that it added value. I hope that everybody has enjoyed this conversation tonight. It, it definitely was packed full of a lot of information that when I first became a groomer, I would have loved to have been able to click on a video and hear all of the things that I just told you guys tonight. Uh, and, and that's what I try to do for you guys. I try to give it to you because I don't want you to be like, I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know? Thank you for the super chat, Jenny and Morgan. You are very kind and I appreciate it. Thanks for your support. Now, let's see if anybody has any questions. If you do have a question, guys, you wanna press and hold the dash button so it looks like a line and then I can see that that's a question. So put that before your question. I'm gonna scroll all the way back up to the beginning. All right. And I hope I don't miss anybody. I'm gonna do my very best. Sometimes I do, and I will apologize for that right now if I miss your question. Okay, still looking here. I went all the way up to the top. The tippy top. I love answering your questions. And we probably have a lot of questions on tonight's topic. It was a good one. Running a dog grooming business in 2022. Jan Rayner says, this may be a vet question, but my son got two seven-week-old beagle puppy mi mix puppies. They were covered with fleas. How old do they have to be before you can f use flea control? I believe that a lot of our flea treatments say eight weeks. The best thing for you to do, Jan, is call your vet. Your vet will know what is safe and effective for a seven-week-old puppy. You don't want to get advice from Facebook or anybody else. You want medical advice on that. We're talking about a seven week old puppy. So definitely call your vet. They will tell you what product they can get of you that is going to absolutely work and absolutely be safe for your dog. So that's important. I can understand the stress that you must be feeling. A little seven week old puppy, actually two little seven week old puppies. And hey, listen, don't sweat it. Fleas aren't the end of the world. That can be corrected, no problem. So don't stress, just call your vet. <laughs> like now or tomorrow and get that taken care of. All right, next question comes from, oh, Morgan, Morgan Super Chat says, thank you so much for this. I so, ne I so needed this as I was clueless on where to go, where, the ne where to go next on starting my business. Well, Morgan, I sure hope that I've helped you. And don't forget about the links below that are gonna help give you more information. Take notes. You know, we all did it. I have, I have probably 40 books upstairs that I bought when it comes to running a business, starting a business, changing a business, you know. Um, knowledge is power, just go get it. The knowledge is out there for us, guys. It's there. Sometimes we don't know what we're looking for though, right? Janelle says, I'm coming back here to take notes. What a valuable video. Thanks, Janelle. Thank you for being a chat modder too and always being here. Um, Jenny uses Apple numbers. I love it too, Jenny. I love it. I love anything Apple. I'm an Apple person, definitely. Apple, Apple, that's my gig. Um, Janelle said, I'll put a line before your question. Thank you, Janelle. Jenny, super chatting. You crazy Jenny. Thank you. Look, Jenny's icons an apple. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, just looking for your questions, my friends. 
Okay, here we got one from David. That's Impossible Pup. Says, does it have to be a different type of policy though to cover you out of state? That's a good question, David. Um, and I know that if you call the uh, the two policy holder uh, companies that I listed in the description, they're the two most preferred. I use Gibson Governor, um, but those two are both most preferred. So just a quick phone call is gonna clear that up for you. Obviously, I don't work for the insurance company and I don't wanna tell you the wrong thing. I would think it does, David, just like your car insurance covers you out of state. Um, so I would say yes, but you're gonna wanna find out for sure. And that's what customer service is for, guys, any of these companies, whether you're interested in the, the Square um, use of their software and their payment processing. If you have questions, you reach out to customer service. If you have questions on shares, you reach out to your share manufacturer. Those are the people that know their products best. So that, that's, I always go straight to the source, guys, if I have important questions that I'm not sure of. Okay, Morgan says, I see you have a question there. I was wondering on what to do with business cards. I don't, I don't know and ordered from Zazzle and still haven't gotten them. Usually my uh, Vistaprint doesn't seem to take long at all. I see Jules says that she uses Vistaprint too, Vistaprint too and she says she really likes them. And I do too, Jules, definitely. I, I've been using them for this whole time. I, I've just, I have no reason to switch. I was always so, always so pleased. So, oh, there's groom, grand style dog grooming. That's Suzanne. Hello, Suzanne. I can't wait to come see you in Florida in February. We have so many big plans, guys. We're not going to tell you all our plans because we like to keep secrets. We like to keep you guessing. But we got good stuff coming for you guys. Um... Just looking for questions here. O oh, square, do they have points? Yeah, King, I guess so. <laughs> All right, let's see here. And guys, if you have questions, if you're watching this on the replay, and you have a question, if you leave a comment, you know, I definitely try to look at all the comments and answer them. And especially if I see that you have a, a question concerning your dog grooming business, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to get back to you. So just leave a comment in the video so that I can help you. Um, just looking here. I hope I'm not missing anybody. I have a few more things that I want to talk to you guys about before we wrap up tonight. But uh, Dorothy says, oops, where'd you go, Dorothy? Hang on. I can't you. Why you just popped away from me? This is, oh. Hang on, this chat is touchy. Morgan, I see you have a question. Dorothy, Dorothy says, do you have an idea what the new blade for Kenji Flash might be, when the new blade might be ready? The one they're making, we can use the new stainless combs. Okay, meaning if you have the Kenji Flash, the original, I do not know if they are even at all going to make a blade for the Kenji Flash that allows you to put the stainless combs on. There's been talk about it, but Kenshi has not told me that themselves. So I can't tell you that for sure. I've heard talk about it, but I'm not sure. We have to wait and see. Um, the, obviously the Kenshi Flash 5, the guard combs attached with that, and they also work with the ball, Wall Bravera, and I believe the Wall Arco, as long as it isn't the Wall Arco Mini. It works with that one too. So I wish I could tell you differently, Dorothy, but I can't. I can't lie to you. Morgan says, what is the minimum equipment you think you need to run an in-home business successfully? That's a great question, and it's a big question. And I'll tell you what, Morgan, I've done two videos. I believe one or two uh, and were live streams and I think I've even uploaded a separate video as a standalone video on the minimum tools you need to purchase to run a pet grooming business. Um, so it would be much easier for you to go watch those videos for me to take 15 minutes to just list everything. 
So I definitely say surf back in my videos, Morgan. Um, you do only need the basics when you first get started. Remember, you're going to add to your collection as you your skill levels improve and you build confidence and you're ready to learn how to groom new different with new and different tools. You may, as a beginner though, you want to take it slow, keep it simple. You know, comb, brush, shears, clipper, guard combs, good bath, a force dryer for sure, grooming table for sure, grooming arm for sure, and a grooming harness system like the groomer's harness or the groomer's helper that's going to keep the dog safely on your table. But I cover all that in past videos, Morgan. Uh, how to start a dog grooming business, all that stuff. They're valuable, valuable videos, and they're there for you. And, it, and you'll get more information if you watch the video. Cassandra has a question, says, will this live video be up for us later to watch? Absolutely. All my live videos are Cassandra. Um, after they're live, they're out there for you forever. So, because we, we, we bring up a lot of good stuff in our live streams and I don't want to just take them down you know um, raising my pack says I was clueless where to go to I even looked at a map sadly I'm not lost I'm not sure where you were lost I hope you're not lost now raising my pack you're not lost because you're right here with us good job glad you're here too all right oh JP groomer JP groomers here that's George George, who uh, I spoke about a lot in my live stream last week. George, this is your last few days in the States. I don't want to let you go back to Uruguay, but I know you probably miss home. But I wish you could stay, and I hope you can come back and visit. George, you're the best. So to George and Amelia, thank you for coming to the States to, be, to, to, to soak it all in. To, to meet me, to, to let me film you and experience that with, with our friends here. Thank you, George and Amelia, for coming to the States, and please come back. We love you. <laughs> JP Groomer says, Amy, do you know if Square Hardware or the card reader works outside of the USA? I believe that if, if you check on their website, George, you can learn all that information. There may be another website for different parts of the world. And I think all that should be somewhere on that website that I did link it in the description. So that you should be able to find that out, George, because you're definitely going to want to know that because you're grooming in Uruguay. So we definitely want to know that. You guys are the best. Polygraph says, does Kenchi ever have sales? All the time, Polygraph, all the time on all different products. Sometimes they'll s put sales on products that were uh, new last year and now they're offering you know, a special promotion with something free or uh, yeah, they, they do all the time. So check their website. I have Kenji's website bookmarked, I always have, because I always wanna see what's new with Kenji you know, if, they, if they have new products. And now that they sell my shears and make my shears, Sometimes I just go to the website and look at that page and go, I'm freaking real. <laughs> There's my shears made by Kenchi on Kenchi's website. I'm freaking real. They're the best shears. They are the best shear manufacturers. I would never, I would never want to collaborate with any other shear manufacturer other than Kenchi because they're extremely good at what they do. Um, so yes, Polygraph, they have sales often and usually their sales will run across the top of the website. When you first get to the website, it'll keep showing the, the, the sale items, what's new and what's for sale. Carrie says, I want to start my own grooming business, but if I advertise, I might not keep up. Do you hire staff straight away? I wouldn't, Carrie, if you were going to start a business. I would just focus on that. I wouldn't add other people that you'll have to get along with and learn to work with. I wouldn't add anything to this scenario until you were really comfortable running your business. And then, yeah, at that point, I would look maybe for um, somebody to help you with bathing and brushing and just having another person 
on board is very helpful and can definitely take a lot of the stress out of pet grooming even with you know checking dogs in and out so if you're scissoring finishing a dog and fluffy here's ready to go home and fluffy's mom comes your bather can go and do that for you and check fluffy out and reschedule and send fluffy home but just as a new groomer carrie focus on that focus on just being the best you can be um, choosing the right products using the right and the best safest grooming methods possible building your reputation it's very important it's a good question though cmm says i received my new artero brush i like that one last week and i love it wondering though are the two sides different beyond the color yes i have noticed that they are i didn't think so at first but i noticed that they are <clears throat> i'm sure it probably says on the website what the difference is but i noticed that the one it grabs it, it must be it must have more pins or maybe the pins are firmer i'm not sure but i did notice a difference um, just by messing around with it so yes they are slightly different but not a ton different oh sandra i'm sorry where did see this thing kind of skips it goes a little fast um sandra has a question it says what books or online courses could you recommend for first aid for the dogs that's a great great question you can take first aid courses at most all of the grooming trade shows and they're all listed and the groomer to groomer magazine you can go to barkley and view groomer to groomer magazine for free i'm pretty sure without even being subscribed but also um, with every upcoming event every upcoming trade show they have a list of there will be a website that you can go to depending on who's putting the show on and list um, seminars and courses that you can take there's usually always a CPR course that you can take so that'd probably be the first place that I would look because I know that you would I took a CPR class from Hershey Groom Expo and it was it was very thorough it was a lot of information packed into like two hours but it was good oh George says I want to stay so bad you gotta you gotta get here we gotta get you to the states you and Amelia need to be here I want you here George all right let me see if I skipped over anybody else Sandra books online courses okay got that all right good I know it just jumped around for me thank you Debbie yes guys we hit 100,000 subscribers we are 100,000 strong yeah we are and we are really doing wonderful things with our go groomer community and helping our pets our our friends pets our family pets and just being there for each other we are doing wonderful things and just looking to see if i skipped any more questions oh my gosh king of aliens even super chatted and i missed that holy moly king of aliens says i saw a skunk trying to count out count how much money it had a skunk there wasn't much it just had one cent <laughs> also congratulations on 100k subscribers thank you king of aliens couldn't have done it without you thank you and thank you for the super chat i really appreciate it and i love your jokes and i know that everybody does we appreciate it so we did it guys we did it and we are going to be having a celebration next monday live from the grooming table with all of us I am going to have some giveaways there for subscribers and I am also going to have a members only um, Zoom session with giveaways for my members. The giveaways to my members are going to be a little bit more pricey than the giveaways for uh, the subscribers on the channel because there's so many of you. I wish I could give everybody everything. But so I'm going to announce on my community page on YouTube for members, I'm gonna announce the day and time and set up that Zoom session. So it will only, only the members will be notified of that. So you'll get that notification. I'm, I'll set it up tonight just to make sure I get it done and you guys have plenty of time to plan for it. 
And other than that, though, I'm going to also celebrate with all of you, all of my subscribers here next Monday with some giveaways and some, we'll do some fun things together. You know, there's got to be something dog related going on. We'll figure it out, but we'll have fun together and we'll celebrate together because we have a lot to celebrate. 100,000 subscribers is, is a big accomplishment and we couldn't have done it if we didn't do this together because we're better together. We always say that and it's true. And you guys are providing such wonderful care for your pets at home, for your pet clients, just because we are better together. We share, we don't keep those secrets. And that's wonderful. So yes, we are going to be celebrating. I'm gonna to try to get hubby in on that too. Um, so I think, I was just looking if I missed any questions. I don't think I did at this point. But uh, it looks like I'm caught up. CMM, Sandra. Okay. Good. Well, okay. Impossible pup. Not a question and answer. Amy, we went over this laugh out loud. One side of the Atera brush is to remove undercoat and the other is detangle. Thanks, David. <laughs> my right hand and my left hand, man. <laughs> I know we go over a lot of things. Sometimes things just go straight over my head when I'm talking. But yes, I remember Dave and I were talking at the booth too, at the Atero booth when we were in Orlando together. So yes, thank you, David. I appreciate it. So guys, I will be seeing you next Monday live from the grooming table right here at 530. We're going to have a fun night and celebrate 1,000 of us strong with some giveaways and have fun. And my members, I am going to have a Zoom session with you guys and give stuff away so I can see you when you get it. I realize not everybody can always be present. Members, no worries. If I have a system of a way of picking um, the winners and you do not have to be present. But the members live stream will be up for members only after it's live so you will have to watch it and find out if if you won and then reach out to me in the email so i also want to tell you guys that last friday i did a uh, podcast with grooms by rudy and anthony it was phenomenal and it kind of uh would be interesting of interest inter interesting follow-up to this live stream right here tonight guys we talked a lot about grooming and uh, how, how I get started, what it was like then, what it was like now, just different things. But the, the conversations we had were just so wonderful. And it is going to be on their Pet Life Radio, which I linked in the description below, guys. It hasn't been released yet. They pre-record and produce their podcast. He said, um, Anthony said it'll probably be in a couple of weeks, but he said he's going to let me know so that I can let you guys know and prepare you, hey, it's going to be out this Friday or next Friday or whatever. So don't worry. I will keep you posted on the community page in our YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook group, and as well as on Instagram, on Go Groomer. So I will be letting you know when that comes out. You guys are gonna love it. And I know you already love Anthony and Rudy anyway, so you're gonna love this collaboration, the three of us. We make a great team. Now, now our wheels are spinning. We're, we're like, we gotta do more stuff together. We have to do more stuff. We, we, we just, we, we did so well together. We need to do more stuff. This is going to be helpful. So it's coming. Lots of good things. Suzanne and I are going to be grooming together in February and filming together. And she reached out to me. She has a great idea for another project, another seri uh, series of videos that we're going to be working on and, you know, trying to make just absolutely perfect for you guys to help you. So that's coming to Suzanne. Hats off to you, sister. I just idolize you you are a perfect groomer i know you're like i'm not perfect i'm per yes you're perfect you're perfect i love you i love all of you guys i'm going to leave you with a subscriber showdown i'm very thankful for each and every one of you and i'm very thankful for you showing up tonight and listening to me talk about how to run a dog grooming business in 2022 so i hope i've helped you here's your subscriber showdown you stay awesome have a great week and i love you <laughs>